Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Ginger Gilbert, who is a creative director with JJ Flooring Group. Ginger, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Kim? I'm good. You know, you've just recently published a report, and it's the Senior Living Design Trend Watch. I'll get into that in just a minute. Just a little bit of background on you. Looks like about a 25-year career. First 10, first decade you spent as an interior designer. And That's then, correct. And then the last 15 you've spent working in the flooring business, and you've worked for companies like Manning's Commercial, Shaw, Taipei, and now with J&J. What brought you over to the flooring side? Well, Kemp, I was working on a project when I was an interior designer in Southern California, and it was heavily based on color. It was for an underprivileged neighborhood. It was a health care center, and color was very important. Mm-hmm. And someone here in the carpet industry saw that I was dealing very heavily, heavily with color, so they said, come on over, we need a colorist for carpet. I didn't know really all that much about carpet when I came over, but I got a quick lesson. As most people know, everyone here in this industry is very willing to help and and teach the craft. So I got a crash course and, and loved it and stayed and loved the area. So uh, it's been it's been fun and interesting. I learn something new every day. So yeah, can't you, complain. And you know what they say about flooring. You, you can't get out now. You'll never leave. I know. I'm, yep. <laughs> stuck. <laughs> and Jay, most people know J&J is a mid-sized flooring company. It's got its start mostly with a carpet focus with Broadloom, then got into tile. And also now has a hard surface product that's Kinetics, right? Yes. There's just not enough I can say about Kinetic. It's a it's a hybrid product, so it's a textile composite flooring. And I think people are just now getting their heads around it because it's it's not carpet, it's not hard surface, it mm-hmm. it's a it's kind of go between and with the acoustic properties and the slip fall properties, there's there's just so much to this product that we're just kind of touching the surface as far as the aesthetics. We've been so involved in the makeup of the product and all the the great properties it has there that uh, we're just now getting involved in what we can do from a design standpoint. So that's kind of a fun place to be. And it should be no surprise that some companies, especially J&J, are focusing on the senior living health care market because... Just to throw you some stats, today there's 40.3 million people that are over 65 in the U.S., and that number is going to 72 million by 2030. So people are living longer, and they don't want to move necessarily into a nursing home. They want to stay where they are. They want to move into a condo. And and they're the ones with the money. And it's very astute of you guys to, to publish this trend watch report. So tell us a little bit about that, if you would. To your point, Kim, people are living longer, but they're also saving for their retirement. Whereas before, you know, people saved a little bit and they had some money and they all were fine. Now people are really planning for the days when they retire. So retirement these days is is very different. So they have high expectations. And because of we're living longer, medical care has gotten better. um, They're living younger, older lives as well. So they're much more active generations. So It's been interesting to get involved in that. You know, we do our research here at J&J, but one of the things we realize is that we are not the experts on senior living, and we're not going to pretend to be. So we decided to get a group of people together. And, you know, senior living designers are so passionate about what they do. These particular people, this group, really understands the benefits of design on health, on happiness, whether it's physical well-being, mental well-being. So their passion is really addictive. So we started this two years ago. We provide a, a forum for and, a, and an agenda with certain topics that we, we were interested in but that we knew were, were kind of trending and um, just kind of opened up the floor and let this group really brainstorm and, and talk amongst themselves. And we took away several things from those meetings, but really we took away four trends that kind of kept coming to the surface. We decided to take those four trends and publish them this year in the Senior Living Design Trend Watch. Okay. And so what are those four trends? So the four trends this year that came from the symposium were, number one, contemporary transitional interiors. And what that is is what I mentioned earlier, that that our aging population is, is kind of younger at heart, and they're a little more modern than maybe in the past. So we're seeing more of a contemporary overall design trend within these facilities or these communities. The other kind of side to it is, when the aging population goes to look for a place to live, typically they bring you know family members with them. It's mostly you know one of the daughters 
or daughter-in-laws, and they're younger, so they want to see their parent or their in-laws in a really high-end facility that they feel comfortable leaving them there. So that's a younger eye that's looking. So you're not only trying to please the resident, but you're also trying to please the resident's children. So that drives it to be a little more contemporary and transitional as well. The other trend was what we're calling the HGTV effect. And funny, we didn't know really what to call this, so we, we called it what it was. And this generation really is involved in watching DIY, home improvement shows. And when you watch those shows, you, know, you see these things, they, they happen within a few weeks on a very tight budget. This kind of community, people are looking and saying, why can't we have that? I want this. This should be very inexpensive. This should you know, happen very quickly. And so it's a struggle for senior living designers because they have so much that they have to look at when they're specifying finishes. Glare, you know, reflectance off of surfaces, depth perception issues. There are different things that have to be considered as far as the aging eye or you know, knees or walkers. They really have to research their finishes, and they can't just use these beautiful residential finishes that these people are seeing on HGTV. So there's a kind of tug of war as the designers become more and more involved with the community and those residents in their meetings. So that was really a kind of a, a, a trend problem that was coming up for designers, and they're trying to um, find a way to work around and, and find finishes that meet that really high-end residential feel but also perform and don't cause problems for the residents. The other one really had more to do with the color palette. That's We're calling it naturally neutral. With naturally neutral, what we're finding is softer colors are definitely taking a play. A lot of warm grays are, are coming into this area that was typically more of a beige and warmer to tones. But what we learned from the designers in, in the symposium is that Neutrals are becoming, you know, you, you have a purple neutral and you have a yellow neutral and a green neutral. What we typically have called neutrals, the grays, the taupes, the beiges, really have expanded out past that. And we're taking into consideration all the greens and the blues that happen naturally in stones, the pinks and purples of, of shells and that type of thing. So the neutral palette really has expanded and is much more comfortable for the aging eye to take in. So the softer colors are really important. And then lastly, one of the issues that kept rising up was what is next for senior living? They all have ideas of what the next senior living model will be, but that kind of evolution is still unknown. What we did discover is that there is something that's about to change. One of the things that was a possibility is really integrating the senior population into places like college campuses and getting the senior community more involved with the younger community so they have that wisdom that they can share and then the youthful community is going to be able to keep the uh, seniors active. So that was something that came up. The other one was really integrating almost a full community spectrum where you have Maybe a parent is living in a community down the street from where their children are working and then across the street from maybe where their grandchildren are going to school or daycare. So taking these communities, instead of setting them out maybe in a pastoral setting or that type or in the mountains or something like that, really bringing them in and keeping them active. So we're looking really at about a year, two years out that we feel like the model for senior living is going to make a drastic change. So we're looking forward to next year's symposium where hopefully we can get some answers to what that model is really going to look like. All right. Well, and if somebody wants to see this report, it's actually available online, isn't it? It is available online. Anyone can get this, or they can contact us or uh, a local representative, and we can get a hard copy to you as well. All right. Great. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Again, been talking to Ginger Gilbert, who's creative director with J&J &J Flooring Group, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.